you want? Yes, I know you want to have a play. Yes, I know. I know you want to do smart journaling, don't you? Yes. You off? You gone? Hi everybody, it's me. It's day... Shut that noise up. It's day six on my seven days of Halloween, almost towards the end. And today I have another art journal page for you, this time using a little image that I cooked together in my little cauldron um, as a little freebie for my angels. So I hope you enjoy the page and I'll join you again at the end. So I'm working in my small 8x8 circle journal and I've pulled out two sheets that I want to use from the materialised paper pad by Tim Holtz. And because the paper pad is also 8x8, it's very, very easy just to drop your page onto the sheet, draw around it, and then you can cut round and create the complete cover for your page that you want to work on. And now I'm happy with the trimming out, all I have to do is just to make sure it's the right way up. I want to make sure that it's the planks are running vertically on the page and then I can grab my second sheet and tear a piece of this striped one so that I can use it across the bottom. I've got a little girl character on this one so I want her to be grounded rather than just floating so I'm using the stripes as a little bit of a ground for her. And to stick both pieces of paper down, I'm just using standard PVA glue. This is just standard school glue, as some call it. Uh, I'm just going to put some glue on the back, as you can see, and just stick it down, making sure I've got the planks running in the right direction. I don't want them a, a crooked, so I've used the holes at the side as my guide to make sure that I've got it facing the right way. Once the page is complete I will put the holes back in so I can add it back into my journal. So this is the stripe piece of paper that I tore out earlier on making sure that I had that lovely rough edge at the top and again just adding that PVA glue and I'm just going to stick that down and then I will trim it out in a little while. So this is my little witchy character that I created. It was from an old photograph that I digitally enhanced with the hat, the broom, the belt and the spider. And I also gave her a little bit of a purplish dress and green skin, just like the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. But I'm not gonna make you sit there and watch me cut it all out. So I'll just jump to the end. So here she is all cut out and I've grabbed my little bits and pieces from the Tim Holtz Halloween ephemera pack that I want to use. Uh, because um, these are not particularly well die cut, I've had to trim um, a little bit off as you can see from some of the die cuts and then I'm just going to go around with a distress marker pen. This is the Spice Marmalade just to get rid of those raw white edges. Now the white edges on the two little postcard kind of things I'm going to leave as they are but I will go around the 31 with a black a tuxedo black memento dual tip marker pen as well because I can't find my black soot distress marker. It's disappeared into the garage. I think Ian's stolen it and I don't think I'm ever going to see it again. So I've just placed my little girl down on the page just where I want to position her so I know where to put all my other little elements for the page. But I'm just going to stick those down just using a very, very inexpensive craft glue stick just from a local stationery store. Um, it's nothing spectacular, nothing special. It's just one of those little craft glue sticks that you can purchase from practically anywhere. So I'm just sticking down the bits of ephemera as you can see. I'm just rubbing the glue on the back and then just placing them down and then giving them a little bit of a push to make sure that they're sticking nice and tight. So 
So now all my little elements are stuck down, I can stick down my little witch in her pointy little hat. So I'm now happy everything is nicely stuck down, it's time to move on to my next layer. And for that I'm bringing out my titanium white acrylic paint from Reeves and I'm just going to put a little bit of a splodge on my mat and with a cosmetic sponge that I picked up from my local drugstore and the dot fade stencil from TCW, I'm just going to lightly dab some of the paint through the stencil just to break up that background a little bit and try to create a sense of cohesion across the page. So I'm happy with the background pattern with that stencil but I just want to add a little bit more to it. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of the white paint out that titanium white acrylic paint from Reeves and I'm just going to use the same sponge that I used for stenciling and I'm just going to dab around the border of the page to create um, a frame for it. And I apologise if I sound a little bit distracted there it's because Mr Bentley's just decided to start pawing me to let me know that he's there. And now that I've completed the border around the page to create that nice little frame, I'm going to mix a little bit of water with what paint is left on my craft mats because I want to add some splatters. So just to create a little bit of an ethereal effect, I'm just adding a little bit more water to that paint and I'm just going to add some splatters with my fan brush. And because I've created a mess I now just need to have a little bit of a tidy up and then I'll grab my heat gun and then just give the splatters a little bit of a blast to make sure they're all nice and dry before I move on to my next stage. And that next stage is just to add a little bit of depth and dimension by adding some shadows underneath some of the elements on my page. Now this is the Stabilo Black all pencil. This is an aquarellable pencil which means that it's water soluble. So I'm just going to add some of that colour onto the page, spritz some water onto my craft mat then grab a detail brush and then just activate that black pencil underneath all the elements. Just working it in, blending it just to create a little bit of a drop shadow, a little bit of dimension and then we'll see what else needs to be done after that's been completed. So I'm very happy with the shadowing and the, the shading and that dimension that I've created with that pencil and then all that's left to be done now is to add some journaling to the page. So for my journaling I've printed off a little quote from my computer on my inkjet printer. Now I'm often asked what type of printer I use for all my um, printing when I print my digi kits and that kind of thing and all I use is just a bog standard photo printer. My printer is the Canon MG3250. And as you can see I'm just trimming out the word block so the pair of scissors I'm just trimming it 
bit by bit until I'm happy with the amount of border all the way around. And now to stick my journaling onto my page, I'm just going to use another one of those very cheap, inexpensive glue sticks. And I'm just going to add the glue to the back and then just place it down onto the page. I'm really happy with the way this page has turned out. I think it looks fantastic and I hope you have enjoyed watching it too. So all I need to do is just to finish off by signing it and dating it and then I'm calling this page complete. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. Oh, you're back. So, yes, that page was put together um, using obviously the Tim Holtz Halloween stuff for 2016, and also the main image of the girl in the pointy hat was one that I put together as a little freebie exclusive to those people that have made angel donations to me in the last couple of months. So, Yes, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll be back again tomorrow for day seven of my seven day series, and I'll see you all again then. Bye for now.